we really need to talk about some DaVinci Resolve mistakes because you might be doing them without even realizing it. I'm going to show you some of the most common mistakes that beginners do, why do they happen and how you can fix them in a way that will make your grades look smoother, cleaner and more professional. Let's dive in. Mistake number one is the wrong use of power windows. I see it very often also in many different color grading tutorials. So I would really like to show you the right technique. It usually happens when we want to brighten faces, like in this shot, which is quite dark, and it will be quite nice to add some light to it. So what an amateur would do is to take a power window and place it over the face as it should be. Then they soften it. Okay, and let's turn the highlight mode on to see if the mask looks okay. And now we obviously need to track it. But now the mistake is going here to the primaries and raising the gamma like this. Because this is what happens. The result looks like a fake spotlight. So to solve this problem, we need to combine our power window with the qualifier. We will be adjusting the luminance slider which helps us to isolate regions based on luminance levels. So let's turn the highlight mode on so we can see the selection better. And when we push it up from here, we get rid of the darkest parts of the selection, leaving only the skin tones. And I will also soften it here to get more organic result. Now I'll turn the highlight off so we can see the result better. And I will adjust the gamma. I might soften it a bit more. It's all about tweaking. I'll just brighten it a tiny bit like this. And this is our before and after. Much better than before. Mistake number two lies in ignoring the lock wheels. Here we have another shot, which was beautifully graded using my custom power grid master blend. This is before and after. The link is below this video if you want to check it out. I designed this power grid to let you create multiple looks very easily. And it also comes with a very detailed video tutorial, LATS and DCTL to help you understand and customize the grid. But coming back to our tutorial, now I want to add more definition to the model. I want to create more of a fashion high-end look here. And one of the best ways to add the finishing is by using the lock wheels instead of the primary wheels. So let me quickly show you why. I will demonstrate this using a grayscale image. If we look at the waveform and start manipulating the primary wheels, you can see that they affect a large portion of the waveform at the same time. Shadows, midtones, and even highlights overlap quite a bit. But when we switch to the lock wheels, each control affects a much narrower luminance range. The shadows, midtones and highlights are more isolated, which gives us far more precision. And this allows us to shape contrast and add definition without breaking the image or affecting areas we don't want to touch. So let's come back to our clip. And because I want to only focus on the model, I will place the power window over her like this. And let's preview. Okay, and then we obviously need to track our shot. And now I will go to my log wheels and I will rise the midtones very gently. And this is our before and after. And now I'll also go to the qualifier and I will push the luminance slider to the right as this way. Our log wheel will affect only the brightest parts of this selection. And here we can see that we also need to soften it. Okay. And we can manipulate it here. And this is our before and after. A very slight difference, but it adds perceived highlight detail to the skin. And let's also check a different frame before, after. That makes it look way more elegant. Another mistake is not using the scopes. I talk about it all the time in my course, especially when we are working with darker clips. Using scopes becomes essential, not optional. 
As our eyes adapt very quickly, a clip can look fine, but still be too dark or crushed. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's adjust the exposure first for this clip. So I'll push the lift down, then the gain up, and then gamma. And I will also add some contrast. And I'll balance it with pivot. And now I'm using only my eyes and I'm not looking at the parade over here. So this clip looks good to me. It looks nice and punchy. This is before and after. But then when we actually look at our parade, we can see that our blacks went up at below zero, which in color grading is basically illegal, as when blacks drop below zero, different shadow values collapse, and it might look too dark on different monitors after the export. So let's maybe change the parade to waveform, as this is what we are using for assessing the luminance levels. And now I'll create a new node, and I'll call it log, as I'll be using log wheels to raise my shadows, and as you remember from what I was saying before, log wheels give us more granular adjustments. So they will allow us to focus on the blacks better than the primary wheels. And here I will push my shadows up a bit, only to have my shadows on the waveform above the zero level. Like this. And this is our before and after. Our clip is still dark and contrasty, but we keep the black levels safe. The next mistake is using glow without the luminance control. And here I have another graded clip and I thought it would be nice to add here some glow. So I will grab it from the effects tab. And I just want to quickly use the custom mode. So in order to add glow, I just need to push this shine threshold slider to the left like this. And right away I can see that my glow is way too strong for this shot and it blows out my highlights. And we have a couple of fixes for it. As first, I have noticed that not many people use the gain and gamma controls over here. So simply by decreasing gain and gamma, we can make our glow look more subtle. But my favorite way of adjusting the glow is again by combining it with a qualifier. But this time we'll push the luminance slider from the right towards left as this way will take out the glow effect from the brightest parts of the clip, leaving it only in the mid-tones. And then I'll also soften the selection here, and I'll adjust it to my liking. And this is our before and after. And our last mistake is using global saturation instead of targeted saturation. And here I have another previously graded clip. This is before and after. And what an amateur would do here in order to boost the saturation, is use one of the global saturation controls, like this saturation slider over here. But the problem with it is that when we raise it, we increase the saturation uniformly. So some hues that were already quite saturated might end up being oversaturated like the red here. And if we wanted to decrease the saturation, some of the hues would look good, but others like the face over here would simply look desaturated in a very unnatural way. So let's undo it and let's move to the color slice. And I always recommend using the color slice tool in DaVinci Resolve as this tool not only helps to adjust saturation selectively, but it also allows you to adjust the brightness of each hue. So I want to work on my red hue over here. And first I will decrease its brightness like this. And then I will desaturate it a tiny bit. Then I'll brighten the skin tones a bit. And maybe I'll also take out some of the saturation. And lastly, I'll darken the sky. And this is our before and after. So Color Slice teaches us that it's not only currently the best tool to adjust saturation selectively, in DaVinci Resolve, but also that sometimes achieving clean and natural finish is not even about saturation, is about density and luminance balance. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.